I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but if you're not incorporating this strange left hand technique, then your cover of John B. will never sound exactly right. Let's scope this out. Hey guys and welcome to a brand new installment of Weekend Wank Shop. Here's your best buddy, Uncle Ben. So if you're like me, you've been waiting on a new Tool album for absolutely forever, but now as we're starting to get a little bit of hype building up for the next release, I thought it would be a perfect time to dig into John B and talk about how that riff is actually played. Because I know that I have seen a lot of inaccurate tabs and lessons on this, and also in the past, I gotta confess, I've also taught some really inaccurate lessons on how to play this one to my students privately. Sorry about that. Uh, but recently I figured out exactly what Adam Jones is doing with that guitar part and it's really strange. I don't think that I've ever really seen this technique utilized by anybody else that I can really think of. But once you get this technique under your fingers, or finger as it were, uh, you'll really start to hear a difference and hopefully start incorporating it into some of your own riffs and stuff as well. As long as you guys can find full tab for this week's lesson over on my Instagram page over at Ben Eller Guitars. Be sure to find my page. Give me a follow, and then upload a video of yourself shredding through it, along with the hashtag WeekendWankShop. So like a whole lot of other Tool songs, this is in drop D tuning. So be sure to tune your low E string down a whole step to the note D. Everything else is in standard tuning, A, D, G, B, E, but be sure you keep that low E string tuned down a whole step to D to play along. So before we learn how to play that awesome intro section of this tune, let's talk a little bit about the weird left hand technique that Adam is using to make it sound right. Now, the first time that I heard this song and started teaching it incorrectly, I assumed that he was doing something with like a couple of palm muted pull-offs across the low E like this. And that's how I see a lot of other lessons and tabs and stuff on it too. But after doing a lot of, you know, searching out live videos of Tool playing this and trying to find any footage of Adam playing it on guitar, I came to the conclusion that that's completely incorrect. He doesn't play it that way. He uses what I think I can only describe as a muted left hand strum on an open string. That's the best way I can describe it, a muted left hand strum. And uh, it'll kind of wear your, your first finger out a little bit. You'll burn a hole in your finger doing this stuff. But essentially, it's kind of like this. Like I said, this is a really weird technique and I can't really think of any other guitar player that I've seen utilize this in one of their riffs. The right hand is back here palm muting pretty hard. Be sure to apply a good amount of pressure back here right where your strings are coming off the bridge. Be sure to cover up all the other strings too. Don't just mute just the low strings like this because these high ones will ring out on you if you're not careful. So be sure to get your whole hand kind of sitting across all the strings like that. Now with the left hand, you know, just as an example, and we'll be doing this later on in the riff too, I'm starting off with the third fret low E string and then pulling it off to open. Now usually whenever you do a pull off, your finger kind of recoils away from the string like that. So you don't hit the other strings. But that's exactly what Adam Jones is doing on purpose, is instead of with that pull off kind of coming away from the strings like that, again, I'm exaggerating, of course, but instead of doing that, you come straight down onto the next string and sound it out. In this case, the A string. So again, the best way to get a hold of this is don't let your pull-offs go away. Make them go straight down so your finger just strums across that next string. You would think that doing this, you'd kind of get an accidental hammer-on onto that third fret A sound, like that. But there's something about dragging your finger straight down that just sounds it out as open. So again, what you're gonna to wanna to do here is take that first finger and after your pull off, just pull straight down. Try to maintain contact with the fingerboard of the guitar even. And then just keep on going until you pass through the A string. Most of the time I kinda of land on the D string. That's kinda of like my stopping pad, I guess you could say, my landing pad. Cause my first finger goes through the E, through the A, and then just stops. Another thing I would recommend trying with this technique is to fret the low E string with your fingerprint rather than your fingertip, you know? I find that whenever I'm playing this thing and I'm using my fingertip to fret the low E like this, it's a little harder to consistently drag that through both strings 
in a good rhythmic kind of fashion. Probably just because that's a smaller surface area than you know the fingerprint portion of your of your first finger there. I find that whenever I play with my finger really flat like that, it's a little easier just to drag it through both strings and stop on the D string like that. Your mileage may vary, but I know that it's better for me to do it that way. Be sure to keep this all super, super rhythmic. If you slide through and do that open A string strum too fast, you really miss it. You don't really hear that in the rhythm. So be sure as you do this to really concentrate on the left hand timing here. Everything has to be super punchy, precise, and you know very drum-like in a way. So be sure not to drag that first finger through too fast or else you won't be able to hear that note. So now that you've got that left hand roll technique down, let's start talking about the first riff in the tune which features a ton of them. Uh, with the right hand, just be sure to palm mute all of your strings, even your high strings, to keep it sounding really clean as you play this. It makes it sound nice and punchy too. Now what you're going to do is to start off with one of those left hand rolls here on the 3rd fret. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the 3rd fret low E string, pull off to open, and then strike through that open A string. 3 note roll, and again we've only used one pick stroke here. After this with your pick, you're going to play the open low E string uh, 4 times and go down, up, down, up. So you got the left hand roll and then down, up, down, up. Real important to do down, up, down, up with that. The next part's all really similar to this. Next what you're going to do is to come up to the 6th fret and do one of those rolls. So I'm going to play the 6 on the E, pull into open, then the open A with the left hand. And this time with the pick, only do two strokes, down, up. So that's a little bit shorter one. One, two, three, four, one, two. So be sure to keep that in mind. Next what you're going to do is that same figure that you just played, only down at the 1st fret. So we're going to play the 1st fret low E string, pull into open, then the open A with our 1st finger. And then you're going to play two strokes with the pick. Next what you're going to do after that is to come up here to the 10th fret and do that same idea. So this is the 10 on the low E string, pull into open, strum it through the A, and then two strokes on the E string. So all of them are two strokes, except for the very first one. After that two stroke thing that you did up here at the 10th fret, immediately start over. Okay. There's no pause or anything like that. This is in kind of a weird time signature that we'll talk about later, but just keep in mind after you two-stroke thing up here, you immediately go back to the third fret. So for the longest time, the ending of that riff confused me because it sounded like they added on one extra note just for the hell of it, like this. Before it goes into the next section. Because it's usually one, two, but the last time it ends with one, two, three. I just heard that as, okay, they were screwing around and added on an extra note to that riff just for the hell of it. And then riff number two starts with, uh, I was really wrong about that though. That extra note is the first note of the second riff. Okay, so let me rephrase that. For the longest time, and this is just one of those really interesting perception kind of things. This is definitely becoming a tool video if I'm talking about perception and stuff. But for the longest time, I thought of that second riff as one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, or something like that. But in reality, like I said, that single extra note that starts the, uh, the riff, that's beat number one. And essentially what you're hearing is this single low E string note and then a third fret roll. So this is my third fret low E string pulling to open, pulling to A. And then down up, down up on that open low E string. And then just do that same figure again. Third fret low E string pulling to open, pulling through A. One, two, three, four. And then it immediately starts over. So it's like one and then four strokes and then four strokes. Again, we'll talk about the time signature too. Kind of like this. One. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. There's the start of the riff. In other words, the start of the riff isn't, it's there. So be sure to keep that in mind as you play the second riff of this tune. So let's get into the nerdy stuff here and talk about what time signature these riffs are in. I always think this kind of stuff is really fascinating to study 
and I feel like a lot of guitar players are pretty deficient in their knowledge of time signatures and stuff. This isn't just drummer stuff, you know? It's cool to learn about this stuff even if you don't play a percussive instrument. So these riffs are in 9-8 time. And essentially what that means is that each measure of music that we're playing is 9 eighth notes long. Now this is very different from your standard 3-4 or 4-4 four, four time. Whenever you count those kind of time signatures, you're counting quarter notes. Those are just downbeats. One, two, three, four. Very normal stuff. You're just counting downbeats. With anything that's over eight, you're counting eighth notes, which means you're counting downbeats and upbeats, okay? So if you've ever sat there and counted something like one and two and three and four and, congratulations, you've counted eighth notes. That's what that is. And essentially what we're doing is we're counting up to we reach nine eighth notes, and that's how long each measure of music is. So in other words, if you just kind of busted up some fingers here, you can sit here and count one and two and three and four and five. So you'll notice that when I reached five, that was right at nine eighth notes long. One and two and three and four and five. After that five that I just counted, it immediately starts over. One and two and three and four and five. One and two and three and four and five. One. Did you notice how it went five one? and it kind of had that double tap right there, that's part of what makes anything over eight feel kind of disorienting, is that you're very used to music you know, being very measured and every beat the same, but with anything over eight, you end up with these parts where it'll be counting along and double tap and start over like that, and that can be a little bit disorienting. So as you play these riffs and stuff, keep in mind that it is in a very odd time signature whenever you play this. So to demonstrate how that 9-8 count sounds behind these riffs, I'm gonna try my damnedest to play the riffs and count aloud at the same time. Uh, this is gonna be harder than Robocop's nips and an ice storm, but we'll see what happens. One and two and three and four and five. One and two and three and four and five. One and two and three and four and five. One and two and three and four and five. One. Now, you'll notice that most of those rolls were on the and. They were on the upbeats a lot, right? This completely changes when you get to the second riff, which is what makes it very disorienting. But keep in mind as you play that, most of those rolls aren't on a downbeat, they're on an upbeat instead. One and two and three and four and five. One and two and three and four and five. Now like I was saying earlier, whenever you get to the second riff of the song and you hear it as that's not correct actually. That riff, if you were to really start it at the first note, is this. There's the start of the riff. This is really hard to count to, so I'm gonna try my best to not screw this up. But again, like I was saying with the last riff, a lot of it was on the ands. Notice that a lot of this is right on those downbeats. Uh, again, I'll try to give us the old college try here. One and two. Let's screw it up right away. One and two and three and four and five. One and two and three and four and five. One and two and three and four and five. One and two and three and four and five. One. So you'll notice with those there, most of those rolls started on downbeats. They started on two and they started on four. This is part of what makes this change so confusing is because, you know, even subconsciously you're feeling all those rolls in the first riff starting on upbeats and this is very downbeat centric. So keep that in mind too as you play along with this, that the first roll is on beat two and the next roll is on beat four. One and two and three and four and five. One and two and three and four and five. One and two and three and four and five. One. So there you go guys, another classic riff decoded. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I hope you guys can incorporate that weird left hand roll technique into some of your own riffs as well. I really like how punchy and percussive it sounds whenever Adam does that in this riff. So hopefully you'll have some good luck with it. Uh, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. You guys can also follow me on Instagram at Ben Eller Guitars. You can follow me on my Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash Uncle Ben Eller. And if you're interested in booking some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons with me, be sure to drop me an email, benellerguitars at gmail.com. I'll get back to you as fast as I can. Now get away from this doggone internet machine and go play some damn guitar. Less clicking, more picking.